Just hours after a violent mob of Trump supporters broke into the United States Capitol in an attempt to stop the certification of a presidential election, take that in, that happened. It's hard to believe, even today, even though we saw it. Uh, then Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said he was, quote, exhilarated the insurrection could potentially hurt Donald Trump. Here's how The Washington Post reports on McConnell's comments, quote, I feel exhilarated by the fact that this fellow finally totally discredited himself. McConnell told Jonathan Martin, one of the authors of the new book entitled This Will Not Pass, when asked about his feelings on the violence and the rioters. He put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger, he said. Standing in the doorway of the Capitol after midnight couldn't have happened at a better time. The book, as reported by The Washington Post, alleges McConnell asked Martin what he heard about invoking the 25th Amendment and that he had spoken with Democratic leadership about issuing a joint statement telling Trump not to attend the inauguration. The authors write that Senator McConnell planned to cut into Trump's influence on the GOP in the upcoming midterms, similar to how he weeded out far-right candidates in 2014. We crushed the sons of you know what, he said to Martin, according to the book, adding, and that's what we're going to do in the primary in 22. A spokesman for Senator McConnell declined to comment on the book. Despite his strong stance against Trump in the immediate aftermath of January 6th, just weeks later, McConnell voted with the majority of Senate Republicans to absolve him of any punishment. McConnell's office declined to comment on the quotes when asked by NBC News. And again, I'm, it makes me think of the Jonathan Swan interview with Mitch McConnell. I mean, there's just, they don't care. They, they, and you know deep inside from this reporting that it was like, oh, the witch is dead. Thank God we can move on with our lives. Finally, he's gone. But then when he's not, they fall back into form. Yeah, the problem is that none of them were willing to do anything about him. Why? That's, that's the that's the amazing question. This was the moment that he had been waiting for, and he he was the one who could have stuck the final life into Trump by holding an early impeachment trial, by by and then ultimately by convicting him at mm -hmm. that. And he didn't do it because he thought, oh, guy's going to go away on his own. He did it to himself, mm -hmm. and he must have been pretty confident of that at that moment to say that to a New York Times reporter who was writing a book. Uh, that, you know, it's it, also it, just it, it's also political survival. They made it, it happened in a matter of weeks. They saw that the base, the Trump base, the Republican base, didn't care, and they f flipped really quickly, at least publicly. You saw he, you know, the comments he made mm -hmm. to Jonathan Martin in private, you know, er, came ahead of his comments he made publicly after Trump's impeachment. Uh, and, uh, you know, he didn't vote for the impeachment, but he uh, d didn't vote to convict him. Yeah. But he saw his, 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 blistering, his blistering speech on the, on the floor. Yeah. Uh, but after that, they made, the, they made the determination that it was in their interest of the Republican Party to continue to support that, Donald Trump. That is a choice, though. Yeah. They did make a choice. Well, I, I just think, um, I, I think Willie, it's, it's also added into this, it's sort of a, a hard to a nebulous part of what's going on or around this is I think over the past four years, Americans, voters, everybody in every industry has become people who cover Trump desensitized to what's bad, you know, it, to the point where they don't care. In, in some respects, yes, but January 6th was something different entirely. Anybody who watched what was happening either in person or on their televisions knew that this cannot happen in America. And there was a moment, and we're hearing behind the scenes, we heard last week Jonathan Lemire from the same book, from Alex Burns and Jonathan Martin, Kevin McCarthy on tape talking to Liz Cheney about maybe we should explore the 25th Amendment. I'm going to call him and tell him he should resign. Um, I should get uh, a bunch of Republicans off Twitter. They're dangerous, House members particular, uh, certain members. And yet, as everyone on the panel in Washington has been saying, the core contradiction of our time in the Republican Party is privately, we hate this guy. We wish he would go away. Publicly, we can't quit him.